Welcome to On TV. Well, I am absolutely thrilled to share with you that I have a very special guest with me named Melanie Vogel. Now, Melanie is someone who aspires to push herself as far as she can. And she has undertaken since June the 2nd of 2017 to walk the entire distance of the Great Trail. Now, a lot of people know this as the Trans-Canada Trail, but it has formerly changed names to the Great Trail. So welcome to Sault Ste. Marie, Melanie. Thanks for having me. Now, Melanie, um, if memory serves, you began this at Cape Spear, yes. Newfoundland. Yeah. So what was it like? And that was in June of 2017, and here we are, 2018, <laughs> October. So that is a long journey. What was it like the day that you set out? What powered you forward to, to get going on this? I, will, I remember it was a foggy day and I was full of excitement because I I, I, it was the day I would start in my next big adventure. Really. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So what was the planning? Like what, what, decide, when, what day was it, or maybe not the day, but how was it that you came to this in your, inside of yourself to decide to venture out on this journey? And the first time ever that it's been done, incidentally. Um, it's not quite true. Uh, there was uh, another girl, Sarah okay. Jackson, who uh, was the first who uh, through hiked the Cray Trail from uh, um, Victoria to uh, to Newfoundland or from British Columbia okay. to Newfoundland. All right, she went west to east. Okay, yeah, gotcha. and she actually finished when I flew into St. John's to start my journey. Whoa! Yeah, she came. She walked into uh, St. John's May thirty first, and that's the day I flew into St. John's to start my journey. Uh, journey on June 2nd uh, in Cape Spear. How remarkable. Yeah. Did you get a chance to meet her? Or no, was unfortunately not. Right. You were in yeah. separate places anyways. You yeah. separate geographies, but you were close, close yeah. So, uh, but um, why would I yeah. do it? Well, it's a good question. I'm, um, I have been traveling already before this journey. I traveled uh, two years, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, came back from this journey and really got the travel back. Right, right. And three years passed and until I decided, okay, I need to go again. Right, so you my have a traveling heart. And you're, yes, you know. and my family were said to me, we were just waiting for it. So they weren't surprised when I told them, okay, I'm going to, uh, to travel Canada. But when I told them that I'm actually hiking across Canada, the first reaction was, and they weren't the only ones, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> He yes. said, no, I'm strong and I'm fierce and I'm going to go do this thing. And I'm, yeah. So well, the self-confidence to, uh, to, to, uh, to do this journey actually came only uh, within my preparation. I prepared 11 months for this journey. Okay. And in yeah. these 11 months, I, I gained the self-confidence to really be sure, yes, I'm going to do it. Right. You know? So what kinds of things do you have to do to prepare for this? What are some of the things that people would want to would want to have to think about if they were choosing to do something like this? Well, I did a lot of uh, gear research okay. because you have to have different gear for all the different seasons, all right. especially in Canada being yes. so extremely cold in winter. Right. And uh, then I did survival training. Okay. Um, well, I would bike and, and, and jog anyway. So, so you're getting so yourself physically prepared. Physically okay. fit. Um, and then I actually I did a lot of reading okay. and uh, looking what other through hikers did and what their experience was within their journeys to learn from them okay. and that's how I prepared and of course I prepared uh, mm -hmm. on bear safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine that that it. <laughs> there is, there's a substantial number of bears in our woods. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of the woods, like so, the Trans Canada Trail or sorry, the Great Trail, it goes through urban landscapes, but it. It's primarily in the rural geographies, in the, in the woods. Well, it's a outer. nice mix of nature and communities, but also big towns, um, the trans oh, the Great, the yeah. Great Trail. Yeah. Um, it also in, uh, includes um, waterways. Oh, OK. For example, Lake Superior that I'm going to uh, right. have to, uh, Trevor, yeah. to travel now, right. um, I have to move to the road, to the highway, Trans-Canada Highway, most of the time okay. um, to travel uh, across or uh, around Lake Superior because this is a water trail about almost a thousand kilometers long. I see. Mm -hmm. So the Great Trail, 
it's not necessarily all you don't you can't walk the whole thing or bike the whole thing it's you would have to traverse it through a, like it's a body that is a body of water that you'd have to either paddle it or use exactly. a canoe to do that i gotcha okay i wasn't sure about that mm -hmm. so the now you're here in sault ste marie now when you left it was june 2017 and now it's october 2018 so that's a substantial amount of time melanie have you been walking or hiking the entire time has has you have you had a chance to stop and and rest in any of that, or do you just keep pushing forward? Well, as ambitious I, as I was at the very beginning, I <laughs> wanted to hike every day, right? Okay. But it's a very physical sure. challenge, and you have to give your your body some rest to um, to build to, yeah. build up energy again. Right. And uh, I was really lucky. And I didn't know this when I prepared for this hike, that this has become such a people story. There yes. have been so many people who took me in, who put me up, who uh, had a hot meal for me or a hot shower, a comfy bed, yeah. which I really a appreciated yeah. um, after all these uh, physically, physically challenging days. Right. And so, yes, I take here and there days out to just okay. to rest up. Well, Melanie, we're going to take a quick little break here and then get yeah. back up to it and talk about some of the highlights, some of the challenges that you've uh, been facing okay. and where you're heading next. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Well, I'm here with Melanie Vogel, who has been walking the Great Trail, formerly known as the Trans-Canada Trail, since June of 2017. And Melanie was just sharing with us um, some of the highlights and some of the people that she have, has met along the way and I'm sure that that's that's an important piece to this, isn't it? Like you you're you're in sort of isolation when you're walking it on your own, but but you're meeting people all the time. So there's a lot of flow, a lot of momentum that goes along with that. Can you talk about like what are some of the challenges? What have what have some of the challenges been for you? Well, first and foremost, weather is my biggest challenge. Sure. Like the weather in each different season. When I hiked uh, through the winter last year that was in New Brunswick and Quebec. Okay. I was looking forward to the summer, but the summer came here in Southern Ontario, and as you may know, it was super humid was and hot, hot this year. Yeah. So it was really exhausting to, sure. uh, to walk through this relentless yeah. heat. Right. And um, another challenge are those little buggers, mosquitoes, deer <laughs> flies, yeah. you know, <laughs> black flies. Yeah. So this is a, summer challenge for me sure and well and then there's of course challenges that come with the trail for example okay. parts of the trail are uh, directed to the road or are on the road oh itself right. okay. so this can be a challenge with the with the traffic that you have to face over there okay or because it's a recreational trail okay so what is if it is um some some sections that are a summer trail, uh, a hiking trail in summer, maybe a ski do or a snowmobile trail in oh, winter okay. or a ski trail, okay. and not accessible for me with, with snowshoes. Right. So this can be a challenge as well. Okay. Um, my greatest challenge in regards to weather was just recently on the uh, Voyager Trail, Voyager, Voyager, Voyager yeah. Trail, right. um, because it rained all the last weeks of f so heavy yeah. um, I, I camped close to a river and the river went over its bank right and I woke into in a six inch paddle oh at 2 a.m. No. in the morning oh. <laughs> had to move my tent they didn't even know at this point what had happened oh my gosh and the good thing was that I was so well prepared that I had an emergency BV and emergency blanket I had a dry set of clothes okay in an extra bag and a right. dry bag so was that something you'd always have like a dry set of clothes would be part of your toolbox of things that you'd want to have well because it rained anyway so much in the last time so yeah. I consciously yes put some clothes away right. just in case you yeah. know I have to change into a drier clothes, getting wet. So, uh, and that really uh, was, uh, it, it was a good preparation because otherwise I probably would have struggled with hypothermia. Oh yeah, no doubt. Know? Yeah, so, the temperatures are really dipping. Yeah. Uh, what about some animals? Have you seen any any of our creatures out there? 
Pink for trail? the longest time I was hoping to see a bear and it finally happened on the old Nipissing Road. Oh, nice. I just came out of a hunting camp and um, okay. to fill up a, a dehydrated hiking meal with hot oh. water over there. Okay. And we talked over there and he told me, oh yeah, there is a bull moose over here with a huge wreck. And I was actually looking for a moose when I saw that bear. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I should take my camera out. But there I had my hiking meal. <laughs> and I thought, course, oh my God, yeah. I'm probably smelling like beef and vegetables <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I took my yeah, bear snack. spray out yeah. okay. and moved on quietly. So yeah, it wasn't an issue. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to see a few more. You're getting yeah, close to I hibernation so. time, but so they're probably on the move. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so you're physically going to be setting out, I think, tomorrow or the next day north you're going yes. like you were saying along this lake superior um route so what what kind of timeline do you expect or I, i'm not sure that's even a fair question because you're taking it one day at a time yeah it's really do you like have a, a timeline in, in mind that you'd like to see that you shoot for well i plan two years for this journey i'm now saying it's probably taking two uh, two and a half or three years okay um Time-wise, because the trail also goes, it's a trail that goes from ocean to ocean to ocean, okay. from the Atlantic to the Arctic to the Pacific Ocean. Wow. So far, I've only planned to go to the Pacific. Okay. But in Edmonton, I can make the decision to go north. Okay. For that, I have to be in Edmonton in spring. I see. Okay. So if I make it in spring, then I may go north. Wow. And put another 3,000 kilometers on my shoes. Holy smokes. <laughs> 3,000 kilometers on your feet. Holy smokes. Yeah. And speaking of the 3,000 kilometers on your feet, you've been posting to a really lovely blog called Between the Sunsets. Between the Sunsets, right? Between Sunsets. Between Sunsets. Ca, I think it is. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> Between Sunsets. Com. Yeah. And I would encourage folks to, if you want to learn more about Melanie's story and to see some of her absolutely stunning pictures like we have posted here behind us, uh, they, there's just so many beautiful scenes, and it's starting from the very beginning in 2017, in June 2017, and it will take you right up until where we are today. There's some that you've gone through Garden River. I could see some of the pictures you went right yeah. through Garden River. So there's some absolutely beautiful, magical things that you can find on her blog. And um, so, Melanie, what are some of the things? Is there something that people can do to support your effort? Have you got any, any initiative that you'd like to share with us? I do not uh, um, walk for a charity or okay. an organization. Yeah. I really do it for the journey itself. Good. To go get to yeah. know this country, its people, um, and, and really it's also a, a journey inwards. Yeah. Like, you know, um, if people want to support me, I'm always happy if they showed me a message, um, okay. to maybe to invite me into their homes so I have okay. a warm stay, especially now with the cold winter right. months coming. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we'll give it a shout out to people along the North Shore heading towards White River, Wawa White River, Terrace Bay, Scriber, mm -hmm. and all the way to Thunder Bay and beyond. Yeah. So Melanie, I'm so happy that we got a chance to meet. I've been following Melanie for a while now. And it's just been my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for coming into the studio tonight. Thank you and for having me. We wish you me. safety and a, um, a beautiful journey ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melanie. Mm -hmm.